The Old Firm Derby is the best derby in British football. For over a century, this rivalry has been covered in passion and hatred. Not to mention the fact that Celtic and Rangers are the most successful clubs in Scottish football, so the competition is immense. The derby does have a dark side. The sectarianism, violence, racism and songs about standing up to your knees in blood is nasty yet that is part of what makes this day so special for 90 minutes nothing matters apart from your team not losing to the scum on the other side in recent years some celtic supporters argue that the current rangers is not the same as the pre-2012 club who were liquidated and so the old firm identity died and instead the term at glasgow derby is used Let's first look at the roots of the derby, starting with the first team to be founded in 1872, Rangers. Rangers FC was founded in 1872 by four teenagers who were students at Glasgow's West End Academy. The club was initially formed as a way to keep fit during the winter months, but it quickly grew in popularity and became known as the People's Club due to its working class roots and broad appeal across Scotland, which is a mainly Protestant country. Celtic were founded in 1887 by Irish Morris brother Walfred with the aim of raising funds for the poor children's dinner table charity, which provided free meals to underprivileged children in Glasgow's East End. One year later, in 1888, the first ever game between Celtic and Rangers was played with Celtic winning 5-2 in what was described as a friendly encounter. It's worth mentioning that Rangers weren't hugely Protestant until the 20th century, but we will come to that. The origin of the old firm itself came in 1904 for the Scottish Cup final, where the two teams clashed. The Scottish referee magazine played a role in popularising the term by creating a satirical cartoon in anticipation of the game. This cartoon humorously acknowledged the commercial aspect of their high-profile encounters, drawing attention to the substantial crowds and passionate support. In one panel of the comic, a man with a sandwich board proclaimed, patronise the old firm. An alternative explanation suggests that the phrase originated from match commentators describing an early meeting between the two teams as being like two old firm friends. As the years went on in the 20th century, there was a rise of sectarianism in Scotland, with tensions between Irish Scot Catholics and solely British Protestants running high. The number of Catholics had stemmed from the significant influx of Irish immigrants to Glasgow and in 1912 the movement of British shipyard Harland and Wolf to Govan where Rangers were based saw a huge rise in the Protestant population and British Unionism against Irish Catholic Rebellion, which contributed to Celtic's resentment towards the royal family, which is still made loud and clear by a number of fans today. The competition for jobs and housing in Glasgow fueled tensions, leading to a segregated city, which would become far more dangerous in the 1960s when the troubles in Northern Ireland would further fuel the sectarian divide between the Glas region religious rivals, particularly as rangers who didn't originally identify as protestant but became deeply rooted in that community until graham Salness became manager in 1986 and after going decades without signing a catholic player soon as signed ex-celtic forward mo johnston in 1989 bringing an end to that unwritten rule in fact when the transfer of johnston was confirmed some fans boycotted the club and demanded demanded money back on their season tickets. Sir Alex Ferguson once claimed he faced hostility as a Rangers player after marrying his Catholic wife, which would force him out the club despite great service. The conflicting sides of Glasgow once came to unite when, in 1971, a tragic event occurred after an old firm match in which a large pileup of people led to a crush among Stairway 13 of Ibrox, which led to 66 lives lost 
lost and more than 200 injuries. Football fans, including those of Celtic, joined Rangers in mourning the lives who were lost. It's fair to say some legends have played in the old firm over the years. McCoyst, Van Bronckhorst, Larson, Sutton have all played big roles in the derbies which have always been explosive, temperamental and full of red cards. In Scotland, the constant successes of Celtic and Rangers meant the derby would always be a terrific and close on-field battle with the two being very closely matched on the all-time head-to-head record. The Scottish Cup success of Celtic and Rangers in 1980 would lead to one of football's biggest riots at Hampden Park. Following the conclusion of the game, rival fans engaged in a heated conflict on the Hampden Park pitch, leading to mounted police intervention to settle the unrest. Excessive drink consumption was largely attributed to the incident. After securing victory, Celtic players followed the tradition of celebrating with their fans and both both teams had received permission from the SFA to display the Scottish Cup trophy on the pitch. Facilitated by a recently installed 10 foot high perimeter fence around Hampton. However, some Celtic fans breached the perimeter fences joining the players on the pitch. While some Rangers fans remained despite their team's defeat, a Celtic supporter ran to the Rangers inhabited end of the stadium and kicked a ball into the goal. In response, Rangers fans rushed the pitch resulting in clashes with Celtic supporters. The situation escalated with the throwing of bricks, bottles and cans, as well as fans using iron bars and wooden staves from terracing frames as weapons. The police outside the stadium were ill-equipped to control the disorder, leading to chaos. Following the events, both clubs received £20,000 fines and over 200 arrests were made in the Hampton area. Celtic criticised Strathclyde police for the handling of the riot, blaming the inadequate perimeter fences. The police in turn pointed fingers at Celtic fans, a position supported by Rangers. Celtic argued that the underlying hostility originated from sectarianism in Glasgow, emphasising their team's religious diversity. Even players loved to get involved in the wind-ups, like when Rangers player Paul Gascoigne performed a flute celebration in recognition of the anti-Catholic Orange Order. The response to it was major, including Rep Army bomb threats and Gaza even admitted that before the game, he was held at gunpoint and agreed to do the celebration should he score. The 1990s were truly a crazy time for football hooliganism and it was felt more than ever in the old firm. The derby witnessed a series of notable events including that controversial celebration, acts of vandalism and instances of racism. The heightened tension during these clashes led the Scottish FA to schedule the derby in the early afternoon. During the decisive match between Rangers and Celtic in May 1999, where Rangers had the chance to secure the league title, certain Celtic fans inside the stadium resulted to throwing objects at the opposing players. One of these objects struck referee Hugh Dallas, forcing a halt in the game as he required medical attention and his injuries were severe enough for him to have to leave the game entirely. In 2006, Celtic goalkeeper Arthur Boric was cautioned by the police for gestures directed at Rangers supporters during a match at Ibrox. It was later clarified, six months after the incident, that the caution was issued for conduct which appears to incite disorder, rather than solely for making the sign of the cross as he entered his playing area. Boric's open expressions of his Catholic faith, such as blessing himself during a fixture and later on, FIFA scrutinised Boric for wearing a t-shirt with the slogan, God bless the Pope. Managers like Celtic's Neil Lennon also found themselves caught in drama. Lennon himself is Northern Irish, but a Catholic. I'm sure you know where this is going. Rangers fans, along with their unionist backers from Northern Ireland, targeted Neil Lennon due to his well-established Catholic and nationalist affiliations, which starkly contrast with the typical profile of a Rangers fan and Northern Irish. 
Irish resident. Broadly speaking, the archetypal Celtic supporter identifies as both a Catholic and a nationalist, rejecting a British identity in favour of a Scottish one, and so this sentiment extends to their substantial following from Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland, where they align themselves with an Irish identity. It's a complicated and messy discussion. Like I said in the intro, following a financial collapse in 2012, the Rangers Football Club PLC underwent liquidation, leading to the transfer of its sporting assets to a new company, Sevco. The club were placed in Scotland's lowest division, causing a hiatus in the long-standing rivalry between Rangers and Celtic. The club's demise raised doubts about the continuity of the old firm, thanks to the question of whether the new Rangers were a continuation of the original club or a new separate entity, not to mention the fact Rangers fans were now labelled as zombies by the boys. SPFL Chief Executive Neil Doncaster considered it a continuation of the same club, while external governing bodies such as UEFA, the European Club Association and FIFA had not formally expressed their position on Rangers, but made general remarks about the continuity of a club's history under new ownership. In 2013, complaints were filed with the Advertising Standards Authority regarding Rangers marketing communications claiming to be Scotland's most successful club. Contesting the assertion based on the club's one-year existence, the ASA, after evaluating evidence and advice from UEFA, and so the ASA did not uphold the complaints, giving Rangers full allowance to use that title. Certain Celtic supporters vociferously asserted their position, with a group even placing a full-page newspaper advertisement in January 2015 to announce their club's upcoming fixture against the new Rangers. After a four-year climb through the lower divisions, Rangers successfully reached a Scottish Premiership for the 16-17 season. During this period, only two cup semi-finals occurred between the two clubs, with Celtic dominating by clinching four league titles, each with a significant margin, never less than 15 points. The intense rivalry between Rangers and Celtic reignited in the 2016-17 season, featuring six matches. Celtic emerged victorious in three league championship matches, ultimately winning the league title without a single loss, securing their sixth successive championship and a domestic treble. Additionally, they ousted Rangers from both both cup competitions in the semi-final stage, clinching the trophies in the process. In the close season of 2018, Rangers made an announcement regarding a reduction in the ticket allocation for Celtic fans at Ibrox. The allocation, previously around 7,000 occupying the entire Broomloan stand, was decreased to 800. These seats were positioned in a corner typically reserved for smaller travelling supporter groups, a decision supported by a fan survey and a surge in season ticket sales. In response, Celtic indicated their intention to reciprocate at Parkhead, which caused a huge problem. For the first game at Celtic Park, or Paradise as their fans call it, the reduction in away fans of course meant a larger number of home fans could attend, but segregation measures were still in place outside the stadium to separate them from the smaller away support. Just before the kickoff, the main access road was closed as part of the revised segregation plan. Thousands of spectators approaching Celtic Park from both directions were directed to a narrow enclosed walkway below the north stand to reach the opposite side of the stadium, including those attempting to enter that stand through turnstiles. The crowd in the walkway area grew to the point where many were unable to move forward and the congestion led to a period of crushing and panic. As more people approached from both sides, some fans climbed a high perimeter wall and fence to escape. Unfortunately, one individual fell from the wall and required hospital treatment, while four others received on-site medical attention as the situation gradually subsided. Following the incident, those involved expressed their frustration with the arrangements and the policing at the stadium that day. Celtic issued an official apology to the fans for the inconvenience and challenges experienced during the event. As a whole, the reduction in capacity for the derby marked the end of a long-standing tradition 
alone, where both clubs allocated a significant portion of their stadium to their rivals, and further solidifying the point that the old firm was no longer a thing. From that, the derby may never be seen as the same, but the hate forever continues, even with the fact the two teams seem to face each other every single month due to the unique league system and both teams progressions in the Scottish and League Cups. You'd think the two would have got bored of each other, but it means a lot every single time. I'm not really surprised that the two teams face each other as much as they do. The Scottish FA ideally want the old firm to happen as much as possible, as it is said to be worth £120 million to Scotland's economy, particularly when it is televised like on Sky Sports for example. The SPFL and the old firm took a huge hit when the 2019 20 season was curtailed due to the pandemic, with Celtic declared champions based on their commanding lead before the matches stopped in March 2020. The 2020-21 Scottish Premiership, played mostly in empty stadiums due to the pandemic, saw Rangers dominate with consistent and defensively strong performances. In contrast, Celtic struggled, regularly dropping goals and points. Rangers won both Old Firm fixtures and were confirmed as champions by early March 2021, securing their 55th title, or first depending how you see it, and putting an end to Celtic's chances of achieving a record-breaking 10th successive championship. Rangers manager that season, Steven Gerrard. I know, shocking. The following year, with the reopening of borders and fans welcomed back to stadiums, plans were put in place to host the first ever Old Firm match outside of Scotland, in Sydney, Australia, because of the much needed financial and branding advantages it offers, as well as the chance for more eyes to be drawn to the competition, not to mention the fact Celtic and Rangers have many fan bases in Sydney and the Celtic manager at the time was an Australian. The historic match was cancelled due to a dispute between the tour promoters and Rangers, and many were understandably glad to see the derby stay home in Glasgow. The players, coaches, and everyone involved in the two clubs must get mentally and physically drained by the preparation and efforts needed to perform in the game, especially as it is always treated like a cup final. Another great thing about this matchup is that that unlike some derbies we see now in modern football which have calmed down a lot particularly with the tourism culture you see in many English Premier League matchups the old firm is just so real and will always feel nasty as it retains so much of the old bitterness and antagonism which is evident by the sectarian chants and banners still heard and shown today especially by ultra groups like the Green Brigade and Union Bears however in 2015 first century Glasgow, the dividing lines have blurred, religious adherence is declining, interfaith marriages are on the rise, and traditional political allegiances are no longer as evident. Both clubs have even made numerous efforts to collaborate, resulting in an unsurprising lack of progress. As I was doing long research for this video, I noticed that whilst the derby was largely defined by religion in the past, it appears that nowadays the main sectarian focus is on politics. Celtic largely represent republicanism, whilst Rangers fans seem to represent unionism and loyalism. And I've also discovered recently that Celtic have a large support for Palestine, whereas Rangers have shown support for Israel. Sadly, throughout 2023, away spectators were unable to attend Old Firm games due to ongoing disagreements over ticket distribution and safety concerns. Despite in a case against the Scottish Professional Football League that ruled Celtic's instance on away tickets as unreasonable, Rangers expressed disappointment. The ongoing discord with Celtic has led Rangers to, to bemoan the absence of away fans, stressing their desire for inclusive support at both home and away fixtures as the intense atmosphere from both sides contributes largely to making the old firm so special. It has been reported that Rangers had offered 708 tickets to Celtic for the September 2023 derby, but Celtic declined, expressing reasonable concerns about fan safety. Both 
club, citing safety considerations, have decided not to allow away fans at their respective home stadiums in 2023. However, it's likely away fans will be reintroduced in 2024. In a statement, Celtic conveyed their commitment to addressing safety and match day experience concerns responsibly, expressing an intention to explore reasonable allocations at both Celtic Park and Ibrox. Despite a vast number of supporters avoiding sectarianism, the rivalry has witnessed serious incidents with a percentage dominating headlines. Old firm matches have been marred by assaults and even deaths. Increased violence and domestic abuse on old firm weekends have been reported, prompting concerns and controversial Glaswegian traditions like the Orange March is still occurring today. The old firm may appear sinister, however, However, it is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to the crazy world of Scottish football, which you really should discover by clicking on the video on screen.